If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. In order to calculate the net charge that is contained by this cube, we're going to have to apply Gauss's law. So let's take a look at that law. And so Gauss's law tells us that the amount of charge that is enclosed inside of this Gaussian surface will equal an integral where we have a constant on the outside and then inside the integral we have the dot product between the electric field vector and the so-called dA vector. Now if we look at the electric field equation we can see that the j hat component actually has a constant value. It just says 6.00. There's no variable next to it. It's not 6.00x or x squared or anything like that. So this electric field is constant in the j hat component and we recall that the j hat component represents the y direction. And then a similar story occurs in the k hat component which is the z direction. We can see that the electric field there in the z direction is also a constant because its value is just 7.00. There's no variable here. Well it turns out that when the electric field is a constant then we're going to see that the flux in that particular direction will turn out to be zero and we can try to explain that. If we come back over to the Gaussian surface here, let's consider perhaps the y direction first. Now there are two surfaces in the y direction. There is the right face of our Gaussian surface and then there is a corresponding left face over here which is a little bit difficult to see. As we noted earlier, the electric field in the y direction has a constant value of positive 6. So we could draw an electric field vector pointing in the positive y direction. And that electric field would enter the left face of the cube, but then it would exit the right face of the cube. Now it turns out that when the electric field enters the cube, we end up with a negative electric flux, which is symbolized by this Greek letter phi. And then when the electric field exits the surface, we end up with a positive electric flux. But because the electric field is a constant, the value of the negative flux coming in on the left face and the value of the positive flux coming out of the right face will be equal. It's just that one will be negative and the other will be positive. And so the net flux in the y direction is actually going to turn out to be zero. So we can actually disregard the electric flux contribution in the y direction because it has a constant electric field and therefore a overall zero electric flux. The same argument would apply for the z direction. We can see that we have two faces in the z direction. We've got the top half of the cube and then the bottom section of the cube and the value of the electric field is positive 7 so we would have an electric field line pointing up in the positive z direction. So we would have some negative electric flux on the bottom of the cube and then coming out of the top of the cube we would have positive electric flux. The magnitudes of those fluxes would be the same once again. And so the overall flux in the z direction is also zero. So we're going to disregard that. Through a similar argument we can even ignore the constant contribution of the electric field in the x direction. So notice this 4.00 doesn't have a variable attached to it. There's no x here. And so we can actually disregard the contribution of that electric field as well by the same argument. So we're really just left with considering the electric field given by this equation in the red box right here. And so now it's time to evaluate this integral. Now we know that a dot product can be re-expressed as the magnitude of the electric field multiplied by the magnitude of dA, so notice we're dropping the little arrowheads because we're only considering the magnitudes, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the electric field and this dA. Now let's talk about dA and to do that we're going to consider the front face of the cube, which we haven't yet considered. And it turns out that the dA is an area vector that points away from the interior of the Gaussian surface. So we need to point a vector pointing away from the interior and label that dA. It actually forms a perpendicular with that surface, so if we want we can put a little right angle there. Now the electric field along the x direction, as we noted, is 
3.00x. So it's a positive value. That means that the electric field is pointing along the positive x direction. We can assume that this direction here is the positive x direction. So we would have an electric field vector that's pointing in the same direction as dA. That means that the angle between the electric field and the dA vector for the front surface of the cube is zero degrees. So we can come over to our expression for the enclosed charge. And we can fill in zero degrees for the angle. Now, of course, the cosine of zero degrees is just one. So that doesn't even need to be written into the integral. We can next plug in the expression for the electric field magnitude, which is 3x. Now, if we look carefully for the front face of the cube, and we ask ourselves the x-coordinate of that front face, we can hopefully see from the diagram that the x-coordinate of any point on the front face is actually 0. So we can actually come in here and fill 0 in for x. Now, if we do that, we're going to end up with 3 times 0, which of course is 0, multiplied by dA, which is 0. And basically, the right-hand side becomes 0. And so at this point, the front face of the cube, when we try to determine the enclosed charge, is telling us that the enclosed charge is actually 0. But let's keep in mind, we have only considered the front face in the x direction. There is also a face in the x direction located in the back. So it's this face right here. And we got to make sure that we evaluate the enclosed charge by using that surface as well. Now for that surface, the dA vector pointing it away from the interior would be pointing in this direction. The electric field, as we noted earlier, is facing or pointing in the positive x direction, so it's still going that way. We can see that the angle between those two vectors is actually 180 degrees. So we can come over here and we'll fill in 180 degrees for the angle. Cosine of 180 degrees is actually negative 1. So we can actually factor that negative 1 to the outside of the integral. As before, we can replace e with 3x. And then we can try to determine the x-coordinate of all points on that purple surface right there. Might be a little bit challenging because of the perspective of the drawing. We know the cube has an edge length of 2 meters. And so if we move backwards in the negative x direction, note that back in this direction is the negative x direction, we can see that all points on that purple surface would have an x-coordinate of negative 2 meters. So we're going to be plugging in negative 2 for x. Now we have 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6, so we can factor out that negative 6. Note there's already a negative sign present, so it's going to become positive 6 times this constant. And then we have to integrate across the entire purple surface that we have outlined. Now if we integrate across that surface, this dA, then we're just going to end up with the area of that surface. So we have 6 times this constant times the area. And we know that the area is simply 2 times 2, because that would be the area of that square there. So we have 6 times this constant multiplied by 2 meters times 2 meters. So in fact, we're left with 24 multiplied by this constant. And that constant has a value of 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. It's known as the permittivity of free space. We can multiply these out. And we get approximately 2.12 times 10 to the minus 10. Since we kept every value in standard units, that means the enclosed charge comes out in a standard unit of coulombs. We omitted the units throughout the calculation for clarity, but everything was kept standard. So the final answer would be in coulombs. And since we've considered both the rear and front surfaces of the Gaussian surface in the x direction, then this indeed turns out to be the total enclosed charge.